Hello everybody, this is Evan with Tabletop Gaming Guild. Today I am bringing you a review of Tales of War by Raven Games. So this is actually a prototype version here that's coming to, to um, a crowdfunded um, platform very, very soon. Um, I'm going to take you down to the tabletop, show you some of the components that they um, sent with this prototype version. Um, know that uh, things can change between now and when they officially um, kick that off. But then I'm going to take you through some of the rules and some of the gameplay there and then bring you back out for some of my final thoughts, all right? So this is the components that they sent with this um, prototype copy of Tales of War. There will be some changes into the final copy, but uh, for all intents and purposes, for the review, this is what they sent with this. And, uh, quality of everything is really nice. So we have these two boxes here and these two... Um, packs of cards and underneath that is the main board that you're going to use to play with here and then we also have this bag here so quickly to show you kind of what's in here is in these two boxes you're going to have these slightly larger than uh, chit pieces and these are going to represent the different units here um, both sides are exactly the same so it doesn't matter which side you use and you can see some of the different art that's in there. The art on there I think is really really nice and you can tell with the color coded on there which side is what. So these are going to be the units that you're going to use in in combat here. Also within the boxes there's um, ice and fire tokens which I'll go over into those. This is just the um, designate who's uh, on the attacker side. You also have these special tokens here, which I'm going to put this to the side and I'll explain more about what these are when I go over what's in this bag here. So I'm going to toss these back into the box here and I'll go over exactly how we use those guys here in a little bit. So in these two packs of cards here, Again, really nice artwork as you can see into that. I think everything looks really, really nice, um, even for a prototype copy. So one of these decks is labeled objective, one is labeled as rewards. So rewards, if you look at these, will actually get you upgrades for heroes or um, different units that you could use in the game. Um, and you acquire those uh, actually by slaying other people's heroes or completing your objectives through the game. The objectives here is when you set up your battle, you're actually going to pull random one and it's going to give you different victory conditions. So each time you play against your opponents, you're actually going to have various victory conditions. And some of these, um, like this one here, uh, Siege Weapons, it actually forces you to take like certain things into your army. So it can change how you're going to build your armies and whatnot through them. So it's a really neat way to kind of vary the game every time you play. And then as I said, board here. So it's not a big board, but um, the quality of it is actually really cool. I really like the back, how it lays like that. But the game is set up so you have one side over here, one side over here. You're going to actually build up your army here, depending on what the objectives are. As I showed you with that, certain objectives are going to force your army composition to be slightly different. But, once you get that all uh, figured out, what it is, so you're going to pick your units, and we're going to pull these guys back over here, and open that up. So, as I was showing you the different things here, so the triangles that are over here. Let me pull it up a little closer. So you see how one is like a solid, one is hollowed out there, and then there's a third one, like this one right here. If you can see that, it's got a little bump on the bottom here. So what they go for is the solid ones like this are your core units. So when you pick your armies, you have to have seven core units in there. And you can pick them out of there and there's a whole bunch of them listed there. And I'm gonna pull over the rule book here to kind of show you, because they lay it out in a, a bigger way here. So the core, so you could have swordsmen, spearmen, and so on and so forth. 
and I'll go over what the numbers and everything mean here in a little bit just to kind of show you though all the different units and they all have little different abilities on how they go and they nice that I like that they put this all on just one page for reference for you so when you're playing you can kind of go right to it so the next one here me Here we go. So the empty triangle like that, that's going to be your hero units. So hero units are extremely powerful through the game. You're going to have stuff like mages and whatnot that can cast magic that's really powerful. Um, you have to pick one um, hero unit there to be into your, uh, your, uh, your battle here. So you'll have the seven core units, you'll have one hero. You also have zero to three um, special units. And that all depends on if you have uh, the reward cards, which were these again. They all lead to like ice sorcerers, hydras, fire sort, and so on and so forth. So you could have none of those, you could have up to three of those. If you have the reward cards to use them, you go and use them. We'll talk more about getting into the rewards cards here in a little bit. So, everything's laid out onto this grid. To give you a couple examples of how kind of things work here. So, you'll see the numbers that are on the, the units down here. I'll throw a couple over here so you can kind of follow along and I'll just point to... So, on the units on the left, you're gonna see a number. So what that number corresponds to here is their movement. That's telling you how many squares they actually can move. Also, you can rotate 45 degrees. So, like such, 45. Because position matters for, if you say if you're attacking this unit here. Um, such as like the swordsmen, they can't be attacked by um, arrows from the front. So you would have to get like arrows coming in from the sides or from behind. But you couldn't have them straight ahead. The second number, that is going to correspond to the range. So some units such as the swordsman here or this vampire here, have a range of zero. That means they can't shoot at range at all. But the archers here, the mages over here, or this catapult here, have a range. So that's how many squares over, and diagonals count as one per also. So, say, let's just pretend he doesn't have the, you can't shoot him from um, special building out there. So, to figure out range, you go one, two, three, he's in range, he could shoot on your turn. So on your turn, you pick one unit to activate, and you can either move or attack with them. And as soon as you do that, it's the other person's turn, they can do the same thing. They can move and they can attack. And I'll go through a couple turn rounds here once I get everything set up. So, um, there is actually no battle power, there's no dice rolling into this game at all. Everything is... If it's in range like this, or if it's like that, and I activate to attack, that unit is straight up eliminated. So if it was like this, I'm going to activate him to attack this unit. This unit is eliminated. Done. So it's all about um, strategizing how I can move my pieces into certain positions so I can take out my opponent. Um, you don't have to worry about luck in this game whatsoever. So now I'm going to clear off the board here, show you a couple other things, and then I'm going to set up for a, an example for you. So hang on one minute, and I will be right back. All right, so I'm back here now. Um, I've cleared off some of the units here. I'm going to show you what was in this sack here. These are actually just the different terrain tiles that you have. So you'll have terrain tiles that will pop up. And that's one part that actually will show up here on the objectives. It'll tell you how many terrain tiles you're going to get in the game each player will get so many. So like at this one, defend the base, each player gets two terrain tiles plus the one strategic point for each player. Strategic points was this one. So you're gonna randomly draw them out and you get to lay them out one at a time. 
and there's a bunch of different ones in there. The bag is quite full. Uh, like here's everything that's in there. There's quite a bit of different terrain. So you're going to have various um, setups every time. And you can see they fit into the squares like that. They go into a little two by two like that. And they fit nicely. And I just threw a couple out. Um, now they all have symbols on them. So what the symbols are going to tell you is what they do. So if you see an S on them, that means it has a special uh, rule right over here in the rule book is going to tell you what each one does here. I'm not going to go into the particulars of exactly what they all mean, but uh, just know that if it has an S, you can quickly look into the rule book there. It has the reference in there, uh, much like the units, very well laid out. So the other symbols on there, so you're going to have an eyeball with a dash through it or not. That's going to tell you that either it's going to block line of sight or not. So if it blocks line of sight, that means you can't shoot through it. But in situations where it doesn't block line of sight, it's, you can continue to shoot through it. The other symbol on here, let me see right here. So like that do not enter kind of symbol right there. That tells you that it's impassable, so units can't go into it. Otherwise, units can go through or um, into those, those squares. And then follow up. There's certain movement uh, special rules like the swamp and the special actually reduces um, movement like you have to stop when you enter it and stuff like that so you just follow the, the rules on that so what I'm going to do now I'm going to clear this off here and then I'm going to just kind of set up a um, a quick run through of exactly how this kind of plays out and then bring you back from the tabletop to give you my final thoughts all right so I have a uh, battle set up here and I will take you through on what I actually did to set this up here. So game setup, they actually have this really nicely laid out here. It's just a couple of like two pages of what you actually do. So what you do is you're going to determine who the attacker is. So this token will uh, represent who the attacker is. So this game is built that if you have an opponent that you're going to play with multiple times, um, that's where the rewards come in and, uh, this attacker. So the first time you're playing against an opponent, you use this, you just randomly determine who's going to be the attacker. So in this situation, I just chose red to be the attacker. Um, but after this, then uh, blue next time would be the attacker. And um, it would rotate back and forth each time from there. So once you got the attacker figured out there, um, you're going to draw the objective card. So I drew the objective card here, and with the objective card here, it's uh, capture the strategic point. So the attacker, it tells you the victory condition. The attacker places the strategic point in their opponent's deployment zone at the end of the terrain deployment phase. They need to reach that to win the, the battle. So that's the victory condition for red here. They need to get unit there. So there's no set time, it's just whenever that happens or when the units are eliminated or if you want to withdraw for whatever reason and call the game, you can do that also. So right down here, the defender unit uh, wins if they eliminate four enemy units or their hero. So blue, they do have a timing, so to speak, if they can just eliminate four enemy units, so they need to line up on their defense and figure out how to do that. Down here, terrain tiles, two plus one strategic point. So I reached into the bag here, and each side got to pull a random terrain out. So it looks like we have a hill, and we got a town here. So town's a block line of sight. There is a special with that, and you cannot walk through that. Same over here for the hills. So hills, block line of sight, and it has a special. So over here with the town here, um, they are impassable with the special, the uh, special as I'm reading through here. They can be destroyed by catapults, which I believe, yep, red does have a catapult, so they can destroy that. If they're targeted by one, the building is destroyed and immediately removed from the game, so possibility if need be. Now the hill, their special here is um, any a unit that has to stop when they enter the hill tile. Any range unit standing on the hill gets plus one ranged. And then flat range units and it can fire at the first or second enemy unit. So that's one thing I didn't talk about and I'm going to talk about here as we play here. So 
units like uh, the archers. They're called uh, flat range units. So as we talked about here, that four says their range. So as they count out four, they have to attack the first unit that they reach. So I'll put these back here. So in this situation, they would have to attack the archer here. They couldn't attack this spearman. But since they're on the hill, now they could do the first or the second. But if they were, you know, there, they couldn't do that. So there are other units in here that are not flat target or flat range units. Those are uh, called parabolic ranged units. So what those are is any of the uh, wizards that are in here, which there's none into this scenario, or the catapult. They can actually pick targets um as long as this one the range they can attack any unit in that range now another thing is these flat attacks they can't fire through their own units but these ones can so going back to the setup here so as we laid that out will we laid the strategic there this is where we um each side would then choose their units and as i talked about you get seven core units which is the the fold-in um, triangles. So you get to pick those. You get to pick if you have special units, zero to three, depending on these special rewards, if you require rewards uh, while playing. And then everyone gets to pick one unit. I chose these rangers here in blue, chose, uh, which one was it? That guy here, which is a paladin. So, after the units are um, figured out on what you want to use, you're going to deploy them. So whoever the attacker has to play, you place these out, and the attacker would place one unit. Then the next person would lay out two, and then it would be back here to two, and so on and so forth, bouncing back and forth. Has to be in the deployment zone. Deployment zone is this first two squares on each side. So after that, now it's time for battle. So on your turn, like I told you, is you pick a unit. So I'm playing red at this point. So I pick a unit and I can move it at speed. So we're going to go and take the spearman like that. My turn's over. So now it would be blue. So say blue is going to move these archers up here. Now it's back to red. And then blue, red blue and so on and so forth and it's going to go on and um, on and overall the game has a good feel of moving very quick now one cool thing here so like the cavalry has a special that it can move an extra square if it's moving in a straight line so it's red's turn so i'm going to go two and then the one for the special and we're going to continue so i'm going to continue through here um, i'm going to do a couple of turns here off camera and then we're going to kind of come back and take a look at a little further into the game here all right so we're a couple of turns in here now um each side has lost uh, a unit so far and a couple of things that have popped up here that i want to show so right now i have um these rangers and they're facing at this 45 pointing this way so even though it has a range of four um, everything has to stay in straight lines, so shooting this way would have to come into the straight line. So one, two, three, four, you could shoot here. Even though that's technically four, it can't shoot that. It has to stay in the straight line. So that's one thing I want to show you. Everything, it's designed to be very straightforward onto, on this layout. So it's Red's turn right now, and what, what Red's can do here is actually... This guy here has two movements, so he can rotate to 45, and then the attacking is just straight up moving into this square. So since he moves into that square, he's going to eliminate that blue, and he maintains that that like that. Um, so combat is just straight up like that. And the game's going to continue then, and you just follow along into uh, this victory condition here, and um, you're going to continue the game until you one side matches that, um, their condition or the other side is going to match theirs. Um, so once the game is completed, um, you're going to resolve rewards. So the w if you've lost any of your special units, uh, which 
is going to be um, the ones that you get from these cards, you're going to lose that card. Um, as I said, this, guy, this game is kind of designed to uh, play multiple times and you kind of gain uh, different powers and units and stuff like that as you go through. I'm going to open it up and show you. So, so like the Dwarf Warriors or Giant Hydra and so on and so forth. So if they get lost into the battle, then you're going to lose that card. You got to return it into the deck here and it's going to get reshuffled in. So the winner, whoever wins this game, is going to shuffle this up draw two cards, keep one. And then the loser gets to just draw one. They get whatever they have on that. Now, whenever you have these, they have to be placed face up on your side. So there's never ever surprises such, you know, because there are stuff like uh, Unwavering Faith or Deadly Accuracy, um, special abilities. There's no surprises. Now, another thing with that too. So... If you eliminate the other person's hero, which is this one right here, or like that one right here, if you elim say uh, Red eliminated that hero, if they had any uh, reward cards, you can take a random one from them um, at the end of the game there. Now that's done before any new ones are drawn. So the new ones that you're going to get from the battle, those are unaffected from that. So when you eliminate that, you can get, it's almost like you're looting and getting extra stuff for it but that's pretty much the game right there um i'm going to take you up from the tabletop here and i'm going to give you my final thoughts about the game all right everybody so we're back from the tabletop here so tales of war here this game is a real interesting play on um a very basic combat layout so no dice rolling i really like that so it's really high up onto the strategic level of the game, so it's a lot of thinking on how I'm going to plot out and how to move. Very limited resource on each uh, component, like you don't have a lot of movement, so you're not going to be moving around onto the board really quickly. Granted, the board's not very big, but that still limits you on how quickly, and turning takes forever into this game. Much like if you've ever studied any kind of um, old combat um, into like that kind of era, movement other than straight lines was very, very hard. So this game really captures that really well. I really like that feel to it. It has some of the uh, fantasy aspects into it, to it, which is uh, very appealing overall um, into that. This game, I think, plays really well. Um, it's on the board or on the uh, box. It says uh, 30 to 45 minutes. I think um, once you get through this rule book here, um, which overall is, I think, uh, 14 pages. Yeah, 14 pages, and you really count, count one of them. So 13 pages it's it's not a hard read once you get through that and both people understand what's going on which um like i said it's not really hard you can definitely get a game or two in 30 to 45 minutes i feel um i really recommend this game if you if you're kind of into like that chit style game um and you want something but you're you're a terrible dice roller we all have that friend that just could not roll uh die to save their lives this is a game that you can really play with them and they're going to have fun. It's, it's, it's not complicated. It's really cool. I really like it. Um, when it comes out, uh, definitely get it, um, you know, back it, um, get a copy of it. Like I said, this is an early prototype version that we have right here, so some of the components are going to change. But overall, uh, a lot of the artwork and a lot of the style, the explanation is really nice. I really like how they laid out the cards and whatnot for it. So I'm going to grab the cards here. Like, I, I really like how these are laid out. I think it's fantastic how they did that. And the art style in there is really, really good, too. So um, that's my reviews here for um, Tales of War. Uh, really recommend it. It's a great game. I enjoy playing it here. Um, definitely hit the subscribe button. Help us out. Um, every subscription that we can get, you know, helps us. Uh, like, comment. Um, tell us what you want to see more of. Join our Discord. Uh, follow us on Facebook all the other uh, social media platforms. Until later, this is Evo Tabletop Gaming Guild. We'll see you then.